family, D4C Natural here, and I'm back with another video. So first, I just want to thank all my new subscribers. Thank you for everyone who takes the time to comment. Really appreciate it. My goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers, so I really appreciate everyone who subscribes <laughs> and likes my videos. It really helps my channel to grow. So today, we are talking about genetics. Is long hair genetic? So um, first, I will start by inserting pictures of myself. So this is five-year-old me uh, just hanging out in my front yard. As you can see, not a lot going on. Yes, that is aluminum foil at the end of my braids because that was hot back then. And this is me in high school. And um, yeah, I <laughs> graduated high school in the early 2000s and back then, we didn't do lashes or pounds of makeup or any of that. So that is high school me. And that is um, what my hair looked like. I was relaxed at the time. And that was before I started my healthy hair journey. So let's um, get into the number. So a lot of people believe that um, they cannot grow their hair long because of genetics. And I'm just going to um, start with the science of the matter. So I'll first start by saying the science is the science until it's not the science. We're constantly um, learning new things in science. And, you know, the belief the truth is always changing. So I'll just give you a few examples. When I was in school, the smallest particle of matter was an atom. That's not held to be true anymore. Um, Pluto was a planet also not true anymore and um, dinosaurs were all cold-blooded so now we know that there are much smaller particles particles of matter than atoms and um, and Pluto is no longer a planet and uh, we have evidence to believe that you know some dinosaurs were actually warm-blooded now that's a little off topic but the point is to say you know we're constantly learning more so what we thought was the limit probably isn't the limit just like you know years ago they believed that no one could run a mile in other four in under four minutes or their heart would explode that's not true anymore it probably never was true but that's what we believed at the time and i think the same is true for hair growth so according to a 2002 study by clarence robbins um they're saying most humans can grow their hair anywhere from 39 to 59 inches so that's really long. So that's so if you're on the lower end of the spectrum, if you maximize your hair growth, according to this study, you can grow your hair 39 inches long. And that's irrespective of race and gender. So 39 inches, that's pretty long for anybody. Um, and if you take care of your hair properly, you can definitely reach that. So I know there are lots of other studies out there that say, you know, um, there's terminal lengths and that, you know, you can only grow your hair up to, you know, from anywhere from 12 to 40 inches. But I mean, there there's um, so many variables that come into play when it comes to hair growth that it's hard to say that any of these studies are accurate. So um, first of all, these people in these studies, like, did they all have the same diet? Were they all in the same climate? Did they have the same exposure to sun? Because um, scientists believe that, you know, enough uh, exposure to sun actually does help your hair grow. And that's why a lot of people see more growth in the summer months. Did they have the same um, exercise level because more circulation helps your hair grow? Did they take care of their hair the same way? I mean, there's so many variables there. So that's why I believe, like, I mean, I guess it's helpful to know, but really, you sh I think that you shouldn't put those limitations on yourself. Okay, so there are four phases to hair growth. The anagen phase, which is the growing phase. The catagen phase, which is the transition phase. The telogen phase, which is the resting phase. And the exogen phase, which is the shedding phase. So um, most of your hair is going to be in the anagen phase or the growing phase. Um, so about 85 to 90% of your hair is always in the antigen phase. And, you know, previously it was believed that the antigen, the average antigen phase is about three to five years. Now newer studies show that it could be seven or more years. 
And really, like I said, the science is always changing. Like we're always learning more and more. So there are some scientists who believe that there, there, there really isn't um, a limit. So I'm going to just read that right from the study about false terminal length. So although it is common for people to state their hair doesn't grow beyond shoulder length or similarly short terminal length, this is in fact very rare. Damaging hair care practices may result in so much damage and breakage that hair tapers dramatically. However, this does not indicate true terminal length. False terminal length may also be caused by resting periods in the hairs of growth or by previous haircuts which have already consumed the lifespan and the length of a large number of hairs. Long hair experts recommend waiting a year or two from the point where the hair appears to stop growing while using gentle hair care practices and maintaining good nutrition before deciding that it has truly achieved its terminal length. So it's really very subjective. Nobody really knows what your terminal length is, but everyone agrees that, you know, long hair is well within your reach. So why is it that you might see, you know, the other women in your family don't have long hair? Well, you probably learned your hair care practices from the women in your family, right? Like your mom showed you how to take care of your hair and you just followed what she did for the most part, you know, like think about before YouTube and all this knowledge that's readily available. You just did whatever your family members did. So if they had poor hair care practices, you probably had the same practices. And I mean, that was definitely true for me. Um, I think it was more so the way I handled my hair that kept it from <laughs> achieving any significant length. And, you know, now that I have better hair care practices, I have much longer hair. And the same is true for my mother now. You know, I have encouraged her to use my hair growth oil. So she does use that now to help with her hair growth. And she also um, no longer flat irons it as often as she used to. And I encourage her to wear it in a protective style. And now at 60, her hair is the longest and the fullest that I've ever seen. If I can find a picture, I'll insert it. Look at for mom's hair growth hmm? from the oil. Her fro is looking healthy and divine. This is all her hair. Herself. And, you know, as Black women, I think that we're just starting to really um, regain the lost knowledge uh, for how to properly care for um, and grow for sea hair that we're really at the beginning. So in my opinion, <laughs> it's not genetics. Um, you can definitely achieve your goals with um, proper hair care. And instead of asking, um, you know, is it in your genetics? You should be asking, have I created the right conditions for me to grow and maintain my hair? And that's going to be much more productive for you in the long run. So I hope that you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much.